the results of an emergency can be can be very severe. Um, what we see often is people arrive, for example, in these displaced camps um, with absolutely nothing. They've walked for a long way, they can arrive incredibly dehydrated, haven't eaten for a number of days, they desperately need food. And then the other big one is shelter as well. Access to water becomes a, um, a life-threatening uh, problem. So it's vitally important that at that time there is the adequate resources to, to give them what they need. The, the biggest problem for us is to keep up with the, the population of the camp. What we see in a lot of cases is that the camp starts at um, maybe a figure of 5,000, 10,000 people. We start doing the work based on those figures and the, the people keep coming. One of the options we use is water trucking. As soon as we get the water trucking in place, at the same time we're already looking for an intermediate solution. So looking at digging wells, drilling a borehole and setting up a pumping station from a lake or a river. It's always very important to involve the beneficiaries in the, in the design of whatever we do. It is quite surprising how quickly the, the camps uh, organise themselves. There's quite often uh, committees set up quite quickly. Um, and we'll work with them to, to make sure we understand what the needs are and also to pass to the population the messages about, uh, about the projects we're doing. The minimum amount of water that a human needs to survive each day is three litres. That's enough for drinking and enough for eating. In actual fact, what we should be trying to do is, is supply five times as much as that. Camps can be very difficult. Um, basically, the, the biggest problem is the fact you have so many people in such a small area. So uh, you immediately get a, a much higher risk of disease transmission. Another activity we often do in, in camps uh, in it is to look at the sanitation. So this is to look at construction of latrines, um, construction of systems for waste disposal. Linked to that as well is the hygiene promotion. So we do hygiene promotion activities to pass basic messages to people um, about how to use the systems that have, been, uh, that have been installed in the camp. We are trying to ensure that uh, the condition that the water is stored at the household level is safe that uh, they are protected against mosquitoes and blankets and uh, sleeping mats just to prevent as well uh, acute respiratory infections. We have a very extensive logistics setup. Um, so if there's an emergency, if we need to send materials or staff, we can react quickly. Another advantage we have is uh, the flexibility which is given to us by our donors. So it means that we, we have the money available if and when we decide that we need to respond to an emergency. We like to think that the flexibility with the donors is built up on trust um, from basically the, the evidence, the responses we've done in the, in the past. Responding to an emergency, there is the vulnerability to being, um, being used for political gain. Um, it's one of the skills that our staff have picked up is to how, how to approach relevant people, how to talk to them, how to explain to them what we're doing and, and why we're doing it, and it's purely on a humanitarian basis. For shelter we can have a number of different approaches um, based on the needs. At the most basic level it can be a distribution of plastic sheeting, either to protect them from the sun or to protect themselves from the rain. We also can do a distribution of tents, so these are um, basically a, a standard tent which is suitable for a, a family. Another type of shelter response we can do is the construction of more permanent shelter. 
So typically this can be an iron roofing sheet, timber for constructing the walls. In this way they can have a, a shelter which can be constructed quickly, but also it's materials that can be taken home at the end uh, when they return back to their, to their villages and used to perhaps uh, repair their shelters. The first time you respond to an emergency is very difficult, uh, but you learn an awful lot the first time. And after that, you build up a knowledge, you build up an awareness of what an emergency is about. And that helps the staff a lot in, in responding to, to future emergencies.